Good morning, good evening, afternoon, everyone. We are going to start a movie called Murder with Pictures. A newsman, Kent Murdoch, has a reputation for scooping his competition. Meg Archer, played by Gail Patrick, is a feist young woman out to seek justice for those who wronged her father. When an expensive criminal attorney dies on a job, a newspaper photographer captures it on film. When the photo goes missing, courtroom theatrics and gunplay ensue. This movie was made in 1936 and stars Lou Aries. Murder with Pictures begins now. Two hours. I'm springing you, Nate. They can't prove a motive. You're as good as a quick. I ought to be with you nicking me for a fee of 25,000 bucks. Now, Nate, don't be like that about it. All right, all right. I'm just nervous, that's all. But the trial's almost over. There's no danger. Oh, isn't it? You see who was in the courtroom today? Putting the evil eye on me? Yes, I saw him. He didn't do anything. Maybe he's hoping the jury will do it for him. Maybe they would if somebody'd show up from Oklahoma. Spill her story. Nonsense. It's too late for you, evidence. You'll be acquitted. I hope you're right. Still, I don't like the looks of that guy in the courtroom. Get my mob out here. If I'm acquitted, tell the boys to get around me and stick close. I'll go to your apartment. All right. All right. How much does it come to all together? Well, not counting the coke I bought you. You owe me 88 cents. Hey, lend me a buck, will you, McGugan? No. Looks like the jury's reached it. They're getting ready to go in. Felix's coming in, and I haven't got a photographer. Where's Murdoch? I don't know. But I'm all poised and ready, Mr. McGugan. Order. Order in the court. I warn you, there will be no demonstration in this court during the reading of the verdict. Lily, Lily, what was that? Sorry, Your Honor, I just dropped a flash bulb. Eject that man. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? And if so, have you selected a foreman? Yes, Your Honor, we have. Will the defendant please rise? And up. This court finds the defendant, Nate Gerard, not guilty as charged. Defendant discharged. Case dismissed. Dismissed, Nate. Congratulations. Yeah. 
Mr. Ryan, I told the boss to hold up the presses. Promised him you'd make a statement. Let's have it. No statements and no pictures. Oh, come on, Nick. Say something, anything. The boss got He's close. Hold it! Ah, now, boss, just a minute. I'd have had a peach of a story. Gerard was all set to talk. While I was looking for Murdoch, there's not what you pick. Gerard beats it. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I think Murdoch ought to be canned. Oh, I didn't say he wasn't a good photographer. I'm just saying he's not on the job. Where? I don't know. What do you want? I'm from the home of the missing juniors, in charge of the lost and found department. We recover and we return. Now tell me, what did this Murdoch lad look like? Oh, lay off, Bacon. Seems to me I know him. How does this fit him? Medium height, medium weight, likes steaks medium, hates reporters, and is a slicker with a coda. I'm just waiting for the day they pin something on you, policeman. <laughs> and when they do, Murdoch will scoop it with a pixel. I remember I don't want to see anyone. Okay. You will see me. What's the idea? You have a lot to explain, Mr. Gerard. And you too, Redfield. See the birdie. He was looking at you. Oh, why don't you go home? Are you a news photographer? Yes, lady. Kent Murdoch, specializing in American wildlife. The stay at home, Martin Johnson. Your paper wants news, doesn't it? I advise you not to be hasty. This is it. Look, lady. If you've got a story to spill, come on down to the office and you can spill like a busted ring. Young woman, if you will, I advise you. If you want to talk, you better talk to me. When? Now. Maybe we can do a little business. Come on in. I'll chance it. It seems we aren't interested in newspapers. But we are interested in you. And just to make sure you come out that door, I'm taking a picture of you going in. Thank you. Shall I bust this morning's brownie? Oh, uh, let him alone, stupid. Thanks, Nate. Hey, just a minute. Uh, how about flashing the innocent smile of the acquitted? What if I don't feel like smiling? Nate! Thank you. <clears throat> Murdoch, I'm going to give a party here tonight, you know, to celebrate the victory. I want you to invite the press for me. Scotch or rat guy? Anything you like. Champagne. Okay, that makes a scoop of your pan. Now, come on, skin back your ivories. You're as limp as spaghetti. You're the saddest looking bunch of courtroom victors I ever sprayed a lens on. Redfield's night to howl. An unnatural night when rats howl and wolves keep quiet. Why haven't you a torpedo guarding the door? Why, oh, Sergeant? We've nothing to be afraid of. Besides, these aren't my boys. They're Redfield's friends. Look around, Beckham. Mm -hmm. McGoogan. Say, McGoogan. How do you like the party? Party? This shyster carnival? I'm here for the same reason you are. To talk to that mystery woman. I'll get her story, and I won't have to say a degree or either. I'll believe it when I see it in Murdoch's pictures. How did that compare with the deal you got this afternoon? Much less profitable. Well, then uh, why didn't you resist me? Oh, any of the other people at this party would act the same way you're acting. Oh, I see. <laughs> What's the matter, Captain? Did that take the wind out of your sail? No, but you can drop that society page tone with me. I don't pose some funny pictures. I take them. Oh. 
I've been waiting to meet you, Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh... What it is the name? Miss Gwendolyn Enigma. What's it? This guy's name is McGugan. He lives in the anteroom of the Nutcracker Street. He writes the stuff they put between my pictures and the advertisement. I'd like to do an article about you. I don't want you to write about me. I don't pay any attention to him. He was born a two-headed boy and they amputated the one with the brain. Now look here, Cass. But on second thought, it's okay. He uses the word I so often, no one will suspect you're in the story. Now you're interfering with my getting an interview, Murdoch, and I'm going to report you. Yeah, this afternoon you tried to get me canned before you found out I'd scooped you. Now go panel your papers, McGugan. This girl's my story and I'm uh, stuck on it. I'm pretty you two play together. So I'm your story and you're stuck with I said on, and you heard me. You know, this afternoon I took a picture of you when I thought I was going to get shellac. No, I'm not kidding. There's something about you. You're not like other girls. You know, I like you. Well, I won't say it. You probably wouldn't understand. I probably will understand, but go on. Oh, uh, you see? Oh, it was just that... Well, I had a funny notion I'd like to have a good picture of you. I was going to ask you to slip downstairs to my apartment and pose for a personal picture. Oh, and you'll come. Mr. Murdoch, your fiancé is here. May I present the future Mrs. Murdoch? Oh, charmed, I assure you. I have business with you, Celia. How do you do? Mr. Murdoch was just asking to take my picture in his apartment. Oh, really? <laughs> That's an old gag of photographers. I know. I used to be a professor, a dancer. A bubble dancer. What if she was? Skip it, Galahad. I'll run my own interference. Come on, Ken, I want to see you. Well, I'm afraid I'm not your type. She's a charming girl. I can understand how happy you'll both be married. You'd have to see her dancing to understand it. But now, Miss, uh, Miss, uh... No. What do you see in that dame? What did I see in you? Oh, nothing. She just makes me curious. Curious? And look at this skirt, and you're curious. Why don't you get curious about me? I did. That's why I proposed to you. Now that your curiosity's over, you want to call it a day. Something like that? Nothing like that. You started this routine and you're sticking in line. You might as well know, Hanson, we're dancing this number together. Hey, what's the matter with you? Well, boss, you told me to circulate around and snap some pictures. Well, not of me. Take pictures of Redfield, not Scram. My boy could get his heels blown up. Come on, I'm going to get my hat. Let's get out of here. Hey, my hat isn't a mattress. Now what? Some drunk he caved in like a punchy balloon. And I'll get it later. When I think of all we were to each other, then when I catch up with you, what do I find? Oh, when I think Stop of everything... Stop thinking and give your larynx a rest. Now, what does baby want? Don't baby me. You've got a full-grown child on your hands. Oh, a case of arrested development. Oh, yes? Listen, you remember me, don't you? I'm the little girl who asked to marry you. I must have been drunk. Well, maybe you were, but I wasn't. I remember plain as plain. I don't. Up to a certain point, yes. Then everything went black. It's not too black for you to sign that cute little paper. What? What paper? You want June. You remember my love and June. You didn't take that seriously, did you? No, that's why I saved it. And that's why I had it recorded. And that's why I had a photostatic copy made. Just because you write so pretty. <laughs> I amaze myself. One drink of twilight slumber and I sign a note for five grand. Now listen, baby. I get a hundred bucks a week. Did you hear that? You haven't got a chance. A hundred bucks a week. Your salary's going to have more attachments than a bride's vacuum cleaner. Hey, you can't do that. My lawyer says I can. Your lawyer? Well, I tell you, you can't do it. You're right, Junior. Maybe I can't live on 50 a week. Don't you worry, I'll fix that. I'll move in here and save rent. And I'll fix that. The paper just rented this dump for me so I could be near Redfield during the trial. The trial's over. But, Junior, we're just beginning. Oh, I've announced our engagement to all the boys. Well, it looks like you've got me on a spot. And isn't it nice? There's room for both of us on it. Oh, you know how it is, Junior. Girl's got her pride. But you could swallow it if it was mixed with a little gin, couldn't you? Yes, dear, in the silver fish. Okay. <laughs> I think a golden fizz would be better. Gold seems more your taste. Now, let's see. All right. 
and two, Tackleberry. Hen's egg for you. There's two hen's eggs. Three pinches of gin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Whoa. nine, ten. Here I come. Yeah. Jenny, you're not making this right. Oh, I know, I know. We used to make them down on the farm. The city, they call them the bubble dancer's delight, but back home, we just used to take. Why, you? <laughs> Thanks, Ted, for giving my pants an egg shampoo. And now, Pigeon, if you'll excuse me, I'll take myself to the cleaning. Don't come in to see the living statues. My next offering, the dying gall. Posed with great success in the St. Louis World Fair of 1904. Doug, are you changed? Keep singing. What? Close the curtains. What is this? Sing. Sing. Yes, sing, please. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Boom, boom, boom. He'll be coming around in here. Hey, what is this? A shortcut? Have you seen a girl? Ah, oh, just a minute, thank you. Keep it clean. Well, have you? In some snappy place for a guy to entertain. Would you like the next one? Listen, will you quit your clowning? I want to know, has there been a woman in here? Yes. Oh. Only the girl I left behind me, Hester, the bubble dancer. No, not her. We searched every cell in the diet, sorry. She ain't in any of these apartments. We're gonna search this one, too. Come on, Murdoch, get out of there. Well, I got the splats off, anyway. <laughs> you don't look like a Columbia River salmon. Don't be. Honor system. Don't let them catch me. Let me stay here. Don't worry. You're twice as pretty as the one that got away. Next time you're through this way, you better bring an umbrella. Well, that about covers this place, Kill. Come on, Murdoch. We're pulling out. Okay, I hope you boys made yourselves to home. Yeah. We just want to take you upstairs for a few minutes. Gee, that'll sure be peachy. Come on. Better lock your door. That's right. It'd be much less work for the police. People get the doors locked. You said it. Well, that's one room that girl won't hide in. What do you want it for, Sarge? Murder. Murder? Nice girl. A third has been done. I want that woman. Where is she? Where is she? Bacon, you'll bring her in or you'll go back directing sparrow traffic in the suburbs. The man they just took out of here is very dead. Somebody who is in this room liquidated him. I'm going to put the guilty person in the chair at Yes, I have to build an electrical grandstand. Just remember, in this case, you news guys ain't interviewing, you're alibying. You're all suspects. And I gotta send cops to the officers to bring you in. Mr. McGugan tells me you're a killer, Kilter. You want me to make you an accessory? Yeah, fix me up, will you, Chief? Yeah, keep calm and keep calm. I can get you an audience. Twelve good men in a jury box. 
Perhaps you can explain to them how a man's life went out, how the gun disappeared, how the dame got away. Yet all the time Bacon was guarding the door. I'll tell you how it was, Chief. It was like this. Redfield and Gerard were standing in front of the desk. The photogs were gimmicking around and... Quiet now. Settle down. Settle down. They got to bug me with my whistle. <laughs> that is neat where they can get a good crack at you. Is he okay, boys? Oh, hey, shoot. Right. Hold it, hold it. You want to flash the 25,000 iron men. Now, Nate, Nate, I've waited all my life for this moment. Look out. Well, what do you think you're doing? Doing? What's the matter with you? My hat fell off. It went way back there. I don't understand. All right, all right. Oh, but Mr. McGoogan... Why were you behind us? Because he's stupid. Go on. Get up there in line with the others. I was trying to get a shot of the photographer. You're a public gentleman. Excuse the interruption. Okay, boys. Turn on your heat. Now, can't you guys wait for... You? Don't. I didn't do it. Nate! Nate! What's the matter with you? It's Arch. What a picture. Screw it, screw it. Come on, Adam, away. Come on, girl, let's have it. Come on, Adam. Murder, you can't get out of this. Come on, you guys can't be here. Well, at least you're not going to get out of here. Stand back from there. You know it. Chief, that's the way they ran out on me. Cops aren't supposed to shoot newspaper men. I know, Sam, I know. We hammered it a lot of senseless regulations. Maddox. 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 Huh? Oh, sure, Chief. Bacon ain't talking to give his counsels calisthenic. Get away from that window. Okay. All right, Bacon, go on. Well, uh, that's about all, Chief. Everything went peaceful until Keo arrived and I ordered a search for the gun. Then the first thing I knew, the mystery dame had scrammed down this fire escape. You know, she was right. She made a break for it immediately after I advised Sergeant Bacon to take a look in the strong box. Where's the box? Over on the desk. I saw Redfield put the 25 grand I gave you a minute. Everybody stand where you will when Redfield was knocked off. I'm going to see how this thing happens. All right, sir. Come on, McGuggan. You know where you were. That's about the way they were, Chief. Except for that peeping Tom sitting back there. Don't mind me, just go right on. Come here, son. Come here. Huh? You're going to impersonate the dead man. The chump that does that is always the second victim. That deal was standing right here when he got us. Anybody hear anything? Angel voice. And somebody played silent night with a Maxim silent. Redfield saw a slayer. He called his name. Repeat that name. Well, the only thing he said was, it's Arch. I know who Arch is. Arch Cusick. The fellow this gentleman was tried for killing. No, I'm, I'm wrong. Arch Cusick's been dead for three months. Arch? Meant Archer. Meg Archer, the girl who ran out on you. She was standing there at the end of the mantle. Sure she was. Say, I saw smoke pass her face just as Redfield fell. Probably from that incense burner, smart guy. Take a look. Oh. Say, it's a bag. Maybe it's her. There's a hole burned on it. Probably from the bullet, smart guy. The girl did it. She threatened us this afternoon. Murdoch heard her. Oh, to me, she was just a dame in the story. She's still a story. That picture you took of her going through the door went all over the country on the wire picto. Oklahoma City recognized it and cracked through with her story. She had a darn good motive to shoot either Gerard or Redfield. Back in Oklahoma, you're the same racketeering oil promoter that you are out here. You jipped this girl out of her inheritance. Redfield and probably Cusick were in with you. If we had only known her story two days ago, we'd have proven a motive and you'd have gone to the chair. Not so fast, buddy. Oh, I'm leaving. I'm sick of hearing you frame a dame on the evidence of Gerard, a crook, and a chiseler. The only thing you know about her is that he rooked her. I don't frame people. 
There were only two breaks from the scene of the murder. Either the woman did it, or the killer is a newspaper man. You're all going to be held in technical custody to be questioned and searched. Get them open, Keo. All right, I'll try it. Murder. Shakespeare's wearing your cap. Come on, McGovern. Come on, come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here, Kelly. Take this stuff, and when you get that. Let's see your head, son. You know what's in your head? Dandruff. Yeah. Lead dandruff. An inch lower and you'd have died of it. Oh. Well, you know, try to kill a newspaper man. Right. Coming with us, Murdoch? No, thanks. If you don't mind, I'll walk. But, Mr. McGugan, why would anybody want to shoot me? Shh. Take him out, son. You're not safe here, Joe. So as they turn you loose, you better get out of town. Well, what, what are you guys mumbling about? Oh, nothing. I wasn't sure it was you. I don't blame you for not recognizing me. When I met you, I was 27 years old. Now I'm 180. By trying to give you a break, I've stepped in between a flock of smart coppers and the hottest mob of torpedoes in town. So, come on. You're going to sit right down and tell me your whole story. And I don't want it trimmed in squirrel, either. Just plain, truthful conversation, understand? Of course. Well, to begin with, I'm an Indian. Wait a minute. Maybe I'd better sit down. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to need a drink. Coffee? Hi, Paul. I'll mix it. I talk better when I move around. All right, you're an Indian. Go on. Well, actually, I'm only an eighth Indian, but I guess that's enough to make me do the unusual, like going on the war path and losing my temper. At least that's what the folks in Oklahoma say. My name is Meg Archer. Nutmeg, they call me. Fine time to tell me. <clears throat> Carry on, Nutmeg. Last year, I lost my father. He committed suicide. Don't seem terribly hard to believe, because he never seemed the type to... Mr. Rod, his racket's oil, isn't it? Black gold. And what sort of man was Redfield? A four-flushing little shyster. You could have used his spine for a map of the Yellow River. I was right. During the boom days, they poured into Oklahoma. My father staked everything he had with Gerard, Redfield, and Cusick, found out they were crooks, and tried to break with them. After his death, I tried to. I've heard how they rooked you. So far, you're telling the truth. Well, what happened this afternoon? When I read that Gerard was accused of Arch Cusick's killing, I knew I could supply a motive. When I got here, the trial was over. But Gerard was still scared, so he offered you a deal. What was it? I, I didn't get anything. He just made me a promise. I was waiting for it upstairs tonight when things started happening. I got panicky and yours was the first door that was open. It looks like you're going to be my house guest until morning. Oh, no. No, that's not my kind of wildness. As soon as my things are dry, I'll be leaving. Yes? Mm -hmm. Come here. Look down there. And it's the same all around the block. It's the homicide. They're looking. And if you think you can get through, you're crazy. The lowing herd winds slowly over the leaves. Leaving nutmeg to dust and to Oh, you can trust me? Yes, I know. I took care of this. Yeah. You... You poisoned me. Now I lay you down to sleep. Thanks, Chaperone. Little man, you had a boozy day. Murdoch, you get out of here.
Well, they kissed me again. Ow! How long have you been away? I just woke up a minute ago when the phone rang, honest. And was I surprised? Well, I didn't lie down here. I was knocked down. Maybe the Sandman sandbagged you. There's been somebody here. They wrecked the place. I fought with him, and you lay there smirking and snoring. If you don't believe me, look around. Oh. Nice work. What's the guy look like? I don't know. It was so dark I couldn't see. Good night. Every plate I had smashed. She had made the closet into a dark room. Wasn't anything in here that was any good. Wonder what he was looking for. What a muscle skull I am. Here's what the bruiser wanted. That old cat? Sure, and he didn't find it because I was lying on it. Looks like I slept with all the evidence. I'm just going to search it last night when you started me playing Little Nemo. What's this? A negative. The case is beginning to break. McGugan slipped me the cap when he thought the cops were going to search him. See anything? It's the plate Doan took when he was standing behind Redfield. Must have had it developed before the cops round him up and McGugan pinched it. Can't tell much from a negative, but a print of this will show the murderer. Will it show where I stood? Sure, Meg. In five minutes, I'll prove you're innocent. Thanks for believing in me before you prove it. Wrong number. Oh, hello, Doan? Uh, I've been trying to get you. I want to say goodbye. Never mind the crack stone. When the cops got your plates last night, how did you come to hold out one? Because McGogan, he... Don't. 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 Switchboard, see if you can trace that call. Sounded like somebody was choking him. Can't that picture a secret? Bedroom. Who's there? Trump man. Mr. Murdoch's apartment? Yeah. What do you want? Bring it in, both. Hey, this isn't a baggage room. Get that thing out of here. Lady said she's moving in with you. Name's Miss Boone. Esther Boone. Esther. She can't get away with that. Quick, get me the Amour apartments, Miss Hester Boone. Hello? Oh, hello, Junior. Don't junior me. What's the idea of routing this roadshow in on me? We made a deal, didn't we? Well, so what? You signed the paper, and I'm going through with it. Oh, now, listen, Hester. Fun's fun, but... Five grand? That's a cinch. And when do you think I'll ever have five grand? You can have five grand right now. Huh? It's all dry up. Beat it. All right, Bob. Just what would I have to do to get five grand? Give me McGugan's cap. Cap? Why? I thought you got it. You pay high for old clothes, don't you? You must think that cap has a silver lining. I know what kind of a lining it's got. I knew the moment I saw McGugan slip it to you. Here. Oh, thanks. McGugan was clever to swipe that place from Dome. But you can be smarter than McGugan. Five thousand bucks, smarter. <laughs> That's too much money for a guy that lives on toast and coffee. Uh, would you join me? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I like mine strong. Murdoch is good crazy. You're getting an awfully deep. You know why? Why? Because you're afraid the plate will show that Archer girl is the murderer. Yeah. Bacon could send you to the pen for withholding evidence. You know that, don't you? Yeah, I never thought of that. Well, guess I better get dressed for the jailhouse, because, of course, you're going to turn me in. Kent. Kent, I don't want you to do this for me. You told me the truth? Yes. Hello, boys. Oh, I heard you were here, Gerard. I got a question mark to throw at you. Fine, Sergeant. 
I, uh, I may have the answer. What's on your mind? You know, I'm not doing this because I'm a sap. I'm doing it because I believe in you, because I'll stick. But not if you've lied to me, not if you're guilty. Hello, boys. <laughs> Guess we're going to have a party. Looks like you have one. You want me bacon? Yeah, uh, could you spare a couple of flat feet, a cup of coffee? Oh, sure. Day and night service. Sorry, I haven't got the toast started yet. How's the case coming? Oh, fine. An all-night grilling of the guests and newspaper boys brought out nothing. Then we got around to opening Redfield Strong Bars. And? We found a vacancy as big as all outdoors. Well, that makes your job uh, tougher, doesn't it? No, easier. Now we've got a currency trail to the killer. You know, if this dough leads to the lady that scrams, the crime fits her like a pair of silk stockings. Always the girl. Take off your track shoes, bacon. You're jumping at some food. <laughs> How come you aren't at work today, Murdoch? I don't know. I, I guess I feel kind of sick. My, my. That's too bad. Is that any reason you can't turn on the gas? Oh, I'll light it. Not so high. What do you think this is, a barbecue? I like mine crisp. Hey, you know why? Now, here we save 35 cents. Murdoch? Pretty nice staying home from the office when a big story is breaking. Oh, I don't want to worry you, but Stone didn't show up today either. Now he doesn't have to. They've hired you and no assistant. That reminds me. I got something that'll interest you, Bacon. Yeah? Hello. Any luck in tracing that call? Stone phoned a while ago and seemed anxious to tell me something, but got choked off before he could get started. Yeah? Yeah. Hello. Oh, good work, baby. He called from the pay station in the Harrison Exchange. The Harrison Exchange? Gerard. Wouldn't that be down toward the oil field near your roost in Stump Hill? Well, it could be near a lot of places. The airport, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Let me see. If Don took a picture when he was standing behind Redfield, that picture would solve this case, wouldn't it? Sure, at the drop of a hat. Well, I'll check it through the office. Have you boys anything else you want to tell me, Murdoch? Uh, no, I haven't. Gerard? No, I've told you everything I know. Well, I must be leaving. Hey, nolly, nolly. Hey, something's burning. Look at that. The bread's all burned to ashes. I told you not to turn it so high. Come on, Salmon. Let's get out of here. You know, Murdoch, when I first came in here, I had the most peculiar feeling that you had a girl in this apartment. Then I found out why. Hester's trunk. <laughs> Maybe we'll drop in sometime and give you a housewarming. <laughs> That'll be just ducky. So you and McGugan are giving me the runaround, eh? Yeah. We're not even out of breath yet. Well, I'll give you until 6 o'clock tonight to get that plate for me. Or... Somebody may be out of breath permanently. I know I lied to you about the money. Please forgive me. I was scared. You robbed that strong box to give me my case settlement in marked money. Don't be silly. You just admitted lying. You can can that virtuous noise, Gerard. You'd have told the cops about that plate if your nose wasn't dirty. You might commit suicide. Your father did. <laughs> You're pretty hard, my duck. Better get that picture. Or the heat's on for the housewarming. Killed my father. I know he did. Devil the man. You set the fight. You owe that to your old man. But what can we do? Maybe you'd like me to wear a bell or something. Esther. Never mind introducing me to the lady. We met last night when she used our host for a clay pigeon. But the cops would like to know her. You win, Esther. You've got a sleeve full of aces. If I win, sugar, you're the prize. Okay. If that's what you want, you can have the joint. You'll help me get her out of here. No, kid. Shut up. I'm digging with my betrothed. Well? Take off that dress and let her walk past the cops with your clothes on. You mean I should save her? Let this worm wear my cocoon? 
Ken, I don't want my freedom this way. Well, what do I care how you want your freedom? I want mine any way I can get it. I'm not going to get mixed up in a murder rap for you or any other day. Come on, I'll let you have my scenery. Worth it, I guess, to teach you a lesson. I'm doing this just to show you which of us is the best woman. And if you ever come near Kent again, you'll sit so snug in the electric chair that Warden will take you for the upholstery. Oh, no, I'll don't. take it and get you out of town. Bye. Goodbye for a long time. You'll have to keep moving, because they'll be right on your trail. I wish I could do it for you. But you'll come through. You've got to. The only chance for you and me. Kent, you didn't mean what you said? You know I didn't. Oh, my dear. And every day you're gone, I'll be working. Watch the papers. They'll tell you when the real murderer is found. You're taking an awful chance. For the rest of my life, it's my only chance. Too bad we didn't find McGugan. Twenty-one bucks. Yeah, charges to post. Hey, hey, Come here. I thought you were sick. You're making me sick. What right have you got to say this dame's crack? Because she is. We got her life story from Oklahoma. <laughs> when she was 12, she shot out all the candles on her birthday cake. They call her nutmeg. Well, I'll admit she's playful. Well, now, listen, George, I know she's innocent. Why don't you make McGugan produce his evidence now? What's a scoop, anyway? A scoop is what pays for my wife's arthritis. I thought you were cured when you proposed to that bubble dancer. Now, lay off this new soulmate before you draw a cellmate. I'm saying you're right, son. I know this kid's backward. Yeah, backward. Way back. Hey, Lee Harrison, did McGoogan give you a place to make a print from? Uh, no, Mr. McGoogan never gave me nothing. You wouldn't lie to me. I don't lie, Mr. Murder. Okay. If anybody wants to know where I am, tell them only the archangels know. But that would be a lie. With the life I lead, that would be gospel. I'm Murdoch. You're the guy I talked to? Yes, sir. My name is Mercer, Johnny Mercer. I'm your new assistant. Well, who hired you? I asked for a job. I was kind of surprised when Mr. McGoogan put in a good word for me. Well, I don't like it. I like to do my own pick. Besides, it's all too pat. Dome clears out and you sneak in. And anyway, McGoogan never put a plug in for anyone in his life unless he had something cooked up. All right, new assistant, you can start in by answering a few questions. Where's McGoogan now? Well, I don't know. When you saw McGugan, did he have a hat on or a cap? When he left her, he was wearing a hat. Funny you asked that, though. He did say something about going out to get a cap. What else did he say? He told me to wait here. And just where was he going? He didn't say. Murdoch. Heaven knows, lady. Thanks. From the looks of things, I'll be able to inquire there tomorrow. No, Mr. McGoogan never left no place. If he had, I couldn't show it to you. You don't work on the paper. Well, may I leave a note for Mr. Murdoch? Go ahead. Photographic department. Here's the menu. Oh, uh, telephone, Johnny. Thanks. Yes? Hold it. Photographic department. Oh, Mr. McGogan. You want me to lock up a dark room for you? Keep it locked until 12 o'clock. Midnight. Okay, Miss McGovern. Oh, 
A woman. What are you doing in there? Hey, come out there, you reporter. Ever see that woman? Meg Archer? She used to care. Sure, we trailed her here from Fulton's department store. She bought a lot of new rags. Oh, boy, am I getting hot. And she just left here. Turn up your coat collar. You've got to guard against those hot flashes. Hey, come on, come clean. What did she want? She asked for Mr. Murdoch. Sure, Murdoch. We're after him, too. Sure, she'll a man when you're after a dame. Well, Keel, huh? stop lollygagging around. Take me to headquarters. I want to ride your hootlum wagon. Why, sure, it'll be a pleasure. Oh, come on. Hey, you guys stay here in case that skirt shows up. Hey, Murdoch, wait a minute. Where's the chief? I don't know. Chief, where's the Chief! Chief, I know Gerard's mixed up in this thing. Why don't you work on his mob? He ought to have his heels straight. Come on in. The Flatfoot Follies, glorifying the American boy. Gerard's torpedo. What did they talk? Plenty. Now we're getting someplace. Everyone with a perfect alibi. Fresh air them, Clancy. All right, you fellas, let's go. Hey, what kind of a police department is this, letting them go without talking? If I was a cop, I'd take a rubber hose to this guy if I had to join the fire department. Thanks, Precious. I'll tell Gerard we happen to bump into you. Oh, I'd tease the truth out of him. Maybe somebody should tease the truth out of you. You lost my trail of this guy's office. He was asking for him. So, you got paper bullets to be out for law enforcement and send you out to hide the evidence, eh? You can leave the paper out of it. I acted as a citizen. Yeah, well, sit down there, citizen. Where's May Archer? Why don't you look in the heart of the woods? She might be building a mousetrap. We're plain folks and we can use plain answers. I wish it was legal to shoot him for the truth serum. That won't be necessary. He's been saved the trouble. The bubble dancer. The future Mrs. Murdoch, you know. She not only bubbled, she effervesced and spilled over. Esther. Have I known she'd never keep quiet. Murdoch, we could send you up long enough to woo and win the warden's daughter. You better talk. You've harbored a murder suspect. She burned 25 grand in your oven. Hester found the ashes. You gave her enough dough to scram town. <laughs> what did she do? She didn't leave town. No, we've been trailing her all over the city. Even if she is a woman, my men will shoot if she tries anything funny. All right, I'll stop her. But Meg Archer's innocent. Don't hurt her. Protect her. If I ever build chumps, I'll use you for a model. Well, go on. Where do we go from here? So take the best tip you ever got. Even if it is from a chump. Find McGugan and you'll find it all. I was going to do that. Not because you suggested it. Just in a line of routine. I don't care about that. Have you seen him? Oh, thanks. Well, where is McGugan? He'll be here. If you're hiding him. Nobody's hiding him. He'll have to rest his big feet soon. Big feet, eh? Where have you been? Hiding out till edition time with the beast balls down in the press room. Oh, ain't you the artful one? Well, come on, Matt, quick grandstander. Who killed Redfield? Murdoch, I've been waiting a long time for this. Follow me, gentlemen, and I'll show you how to scoop for me. Maybe you'll name the killer when you're through playing. I'll do better than that. In five minutes, I'll hand you a picture showing the killer and how the murder was done. All that? All that? The key. That's doing, Mr. McGoogan. Thanks. Photography is about to solve a murder. Come on, have you got something that happened to happen to Oh, just a minute. I'm sure the photographers will be interested in this. Johnny, come here. I want you to get a good view of this. You too, Murdoch. Where'd you get the place? From Dome. Where's Dome? Where I always wanted to go, New York. I stayed to. You never sprouted Santa Claus whiskers in your life. How'd you get the place on? Same way I got it for you the last time. I outsmarted him. You see, when Dome developed his picture, he was too dumb to realize the value of it. He just meant to shoot a picture of the other photographers. I told him that it'd get him canned. He got scared, threw his print in the wastebasket, and beat it. And just as you fellas arrived, I slipped the plate into the lining of my cap. Right, boy. That's the Mr. Murdoch. You were pretty tony to me yesterday. So smart boy did it to get even. Oh, no. I did it to teach you a lesson. You crossed the paper for the sake of a girl. Think it over.
back there. Look up. Look up. Stand. Stand in, in lodge. Went off. And I pulled the fight cord. Who did it, Mac? Murdoch. Murdoch. You're okay. Want you get scoop. Your leg. Look out. He's dead. A rod. A silence. Same caliber that got Redfield. Smashed. The end of that. They don't need that thing. Who's been in that dark room? Hey, look. Gone, who is there? Nobody. Just into the lady who was asking for Mr. Murdoch. I run her out. She was hiding. Meg got you didn't do it. You know she didn't. Why, she couldn't. Look what I found on the floor, Chief. The only medicine. Exclusively for women. The girl did it. With his last breath, McGugan warned you. Murdoch, you helped kill a newspaper man. Hello? A lady calling Murdoch. Come on, Murdoch. Get on that phone. And keep talking, son. Keep her talking. Operator, make Murdoch's call. Hurry. Come on, get going. Hello? Kid, I'm being followed. I'm afraid. Meg, why did you do it? Why did you kill McGugan? I didn't. I didn't kill anybody. Meg, it's too late for lying. All right. She's calling the Dolly Madison. Keep talking, son. Hold her on that phone. Come on, Keo. Sure they say you killed him. Why shouldn't they? Can't you can't believe that? I can't believe anything else. Oh, Meg, they're coming after you. This call's being traced. They're closing in on you. Now, you've got to do something and do it quick. Goodbye. Kent. Kent. Meg. Meg. Hello. Hello. What do you mean a vacation? Do I get a vacation? No, not just for that, you don't get one. Go on, get out of here. I'm busy. Go on. Huh? Wait a minute. I'll see you in a minute. What do you want? Do you remember that guy McGugan that used to work here? Yeah. Well, he's just been killed trying to solve that Redfield case out on the coast. Mr. McGugan? Hey, that's a hot case. You got a picture of McGugan? No. Well, don't stand there. Go find one. Well, I got a picture of Mr. McGugan. Hey, who are you, anyhow? Well, Mr. McGovern gave me this to you. Huh? Yeah, but where's the picture? Well, I got it right here. It isn't, it isn't very good, but... Oh, but... it's no good at all. It's all torn. I know. Mr. McGovern tore it just before the police got it. The police? Yeah, he, he grabbed the plate right out of my hand just as the cops came in. Uh-huh. He's probably trying to scoop you. Oh, no. He liked me. He sent me here on the plane. That's Mr. McGovern right there. Hmm? Yeah. Hey, what is that? Is that smoke coming out of the camera? I'll bet you that's the guy that shot my hat off. Yeah. Uh, Yusuf. 
right down here. Take your time now and tell me all about it. You better go, Johnny. I was told to stick by you. I know, you've been swell, but well, I'd rather be alone. I'll wait in the car then. Come on, come on, try the city room. Hello. Murdoch there? No, no. You sure he thinks the girl's dead? Positive. Morgan had orders to tell him nothing. Great. And no one sent for him. So coming this way, on his own, makes it perfect. The morgue won't admit me. The morgue's closed. I want, I want the body of Meg Archie. You better forget that girl. I can't forget. Well, put these flowers somewhere in there if you want to be like that. Just a minute, Murdoch. You ever see this picture box before? Well, Chief, the insides have been taken out. Mm, regular Sherlock Holmes, ain't you? It's been used as a gun pad. Lens holes cover with powder dust. You were right, Faith. You said the killer used the same technique for both murders. Where'd you find it? Resting peacefully in your apartment. What did it catch cold, so you covered it with the blanket, eh? I don't know what you're talking about. You knew it was there, hidden by Meg Archer. Oh, you're all crazy. She didn't carry a camera. You're lying. You're getting nasty. She's dead, isn't she? That closes the case, doesn't it? What's the good of all this post-mortem hooey? Now look here, my dog. Before we close the case, I've got to tie off all the loose things. Just for the record, I'll state that you knew maybe hit it there after the killing, okay? Okay, your grandmother. Now hold it, you three. You found this in my apartment and you want to pin it on that girl? Just like that. Well, you won't do it that easy. Well, let me figure out something. Let's do this here. I'm out in the sleeping dose. You're true to the end. Looking for stuff. Nothing's Meg. Next morning, I'm offered $5,000 for a picture plate. Well, that's it. Gerard's the guy. He knew about that plate, he threatened her, and he planted that camera there. She didn't kill either of them. Well, I'm going after him. I'll make him talk. Take my advice, play off your arm. If Murdoch wants to go, he'll let him. Well, oh, what can happen to me? You can throw them away. They won't square in with me. He was requesting your body. Oh, he was. Well, I'd like to give him a piece of my mind. You let me out of here, I'll find the murderer for you. Take it easy, take it easy. Mr. Murdoch, the gentleman of the press, full of personality, but so changeable. First he tells me he believes in me, he loves me. And the next minute he tells me I'm lying. Practically told me to shoot myself. And wait till I see that worm. Why don't you lay off, Murdoch? Cops say she did it. Take my warning. You can't bring back the dead. How many? Fill it up. Hey? Fill it up. While we're here, I think I'll make a phone call. Go ahead, John. Hey, Pop. Hey, Pop. Do you happen to know where a Mr. Nate Gerard lives? Little piece up the road here. First house to the right. Okay. Hello, Murdoch. Hey, you better let go, monkey. Listen, Gerard pays guys like me to watch for guys like you. You're the fellow that told the police to beat the truth out of me with a rubber hose, remember? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How would you like to make 5,000 bucks from me? Fine. Talk plainer. Well, I got a picture here that Gerard wants. Better let me show it to you. I don't like it. Hello, Gerard. This is Joe. Joe Cusick. I just want to give you a little tip. I'm on my way to... Wait a minute. I want you to tell me everything. Talk. 
I'll take another slug. What do you want to know? Who killed Redfield? Who killed Redfield? A guy by the name of Joe Cusick. Cusick is the brother of the man Gerard killed. I get you. Now give it to me straight. And here's what happened. Gerard, Art, Cusick, and Redfield were partners. They made a deal with Meg Arch's father in Oklahoma. He owned a lot of oil land. Gerard and Redfield cleaned up, but they wouldn't give Cusick his cut. Cusick squawks or Gerard croaked him. Redfield got Gerard off. Then this Cusick's brother Joe showed up. And what? Well, Gerard spotted Joe Cusick in the courtroom. He had the boys jump him and bring him in. Gerard out talked and made him think that Redfield killed his brother. So this Joe Cusick kills Redfield. I'll well, keep talking. Hello? Hello, Gerard. Oh, I thought I heard a shot. It was only a backfire. I just called to tell you I'm blowing. Yeah. Good luck to you, too. Where's Cusick now? I don't know. Why not? All right, come on. Wait a minute. In here. Start the car, Johnny. Here. There's a guy in that back room. You better call the cops. They'll want him. I'm glad you didn't come out, kid. You might have got hurt. I heard it all. Still going to question Gerard? No. I'm going to kill him. in your hat. They won't look there. Thanks for everything, Johnny. Where are you going, boy? Not? I want to see Gerard. Find out if he wants to see you. He's leaving town. He wants to find out where he's going and why. Why not, please? Shall I send him in? Yeah, sure. Go on in. Meg Archer is dead. You and I, we killed her. You framed her? I wouldn't give her a break when she needed it. I'm going to give you the same thing that Meg Archer got. You're not going to give me anything. You're on the wrong side of the fence. You're taking a pretty big chance for a dame who's willing to take dough. Oh. Forget that her father. You're dumb, Gerard. Meg took that money, it was just proof that you had to pay her off. And she had something else. A motive for Arch Cusick's murder. The deal where you crossed her father and then Cusick. She'd have put you on the hot squat with your own filthy dough. So look at me, brother, because here it comes. as sweet as you are. Baker! Next time, Murdoch, don't look in their pretty black eyes. Look in their hands. He was about to plug you from under the desk.
Corona, Corona. I nearly left that for the coroner. I'm getting slipped out. Well, Murdoch, you had quite a night of it. I was just trying to square things up for Meg. Speaking of Meg, the city's sending her back to Oklahoma. Why don't you go along? Sort of a honeymoon. That's a fine thing to say, Bacon. I don't know what to do. Why don't you try shooting yourself? Meg! We've been keeping her on ice to fool Gerard. And the others. What? Then you're not... No, I'm not. I was just shot in the excitement. But I'm wearing your flowers. Do you mind? Meg! Meg. Please don't call me. <laughs> well, I'm the comic relief, am I? Making a fool out of me. What did you try to make of me? I was beside myself. Yes, that's the only way you could keep bad company. Will you excuse me, please? I hate things. Good boy and good luck. If the lady will condescend to ride in my car, my man Friday will drive you. I won't be driven by anybody. I know my way around. Will you get in that car? I will not. I said hop in that car. Cat, Cat, I want to walk around and sort of gather my thoughts. You're riding. Johnny, drive Miss Archer to her hotel. You don't know where to find me. The Dolly Madison Hotel. Joe, kiss it. Hey, Gene. Here's something that'll open your eyes. Get a load of this. It's Johnny. Hey, Murdoch. Where are you going? Where's Murdoch? Where's the other car? She means twin oil cars. Twin oil cars are double oil cars. You don't marry her until I get that five grand. Well, you get it, Hester. You get the reward. What? The reward? You've got juicy? Sure. That night in the car, believe it or not, Meg knocked him cold with the heel of her shoe. And when I found him, she was sitting on him. <laughs> well, why didn't you bring him in? <laughs> we were thinking of dear little Hester and waiting for you to raise the reward to five grand. Well, come on, tell me. Where is he? Where is he? Do I get that reward or not? Don't worry, you get the reward. You heard it? I heard it. Say, hey, oh, it's police protection. You won't get it. Hey, you. Do you think you can beat the law? What now? You're brushed by a fire plug. <laughs> <laughs> 